Now, testosterone is one of the most important hormones that are needed for optimal functioning in the body. In fact, most men are said to suffer from low testosterone from as early as 30 years of age. Although most of us tend to think of the negative effects of testosterone as those on sexual function, but in fact, its biggest negative effect is actually on the brain. To chat to us more about this topic and the new testosterone treatments available is Dr. Mark Opperman. Mark, good to have you back on the couch. Michael, it's good to be back. It's well, been a year. It has been a while, yeah, and it's been a what a year it's been as well. <laughs> what year it's been. Now Mark, let's get a bit of a, a broad overview of testosterone and its functioning in the body um, so that the viewers understand again what, what we're talking about. Well, I think the very first thing that we have to dispel, Michael, is that testosterone is not only a male hormone. The moment testosterone in, in your adolescence um, play a role in sexual development, especially in boys, where it lowers the voice, it's responsible for secondary hair growth and muscle development. Mm. Um, it really doesn't play a that big a role in um, adolescent girls, but afterwards, that's, you know, in adults, that's where testosterone really comes into its own from a neurological point of view. And you know what, I think that's what we want to focus on today. Okay, well let's go into that because I mean, there are so many influencing factors on um, the, the brain in, in the human body. So what is testosterone's role to keep your brain functioning at optimum level? So you know what, for a very long time we've, and I specific specifically have said that the biggest effect of testosterone is on the brain. And you know what, we didn't exactly know why. And during this year, we started seeing studies that proves that testosterone has a phenomenal function at support as well as immune function to play in the brain and in brain health. There's something in the brain um, what, what sets it apart a little bit from any other organ and that, that is that it has its own form of immune system almost. Okay. There's two types. There's the glial cells that initially we thought was only support structures in the brain, but they work like um, phagocytites. You know, it, they literally eat up little okay. debris and stuff that's there. And testosterone has a great support function to play there. And the other thing is that testosterone is vital for the integrity of the blood-brain barrier. Okay. Now the blood-brain barrier is this network of cells basically that surrounds the brain and allows certain substances through okay. and it keeps others out. And I think one of the breakthroughs for us in that work in this field was when we started realizing that the best way to treat a concussion is with high doses of testosterone and putting the patient into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Okay. So flooding the brain with testosterone that realigns these cells and creates the barrier again and giving the brain oxygen because that's one of the most important substances that, okay. that it needs. And the moment that we realized that, we started seeing, okay, you know what, now we know why testosterone plays such a vital role in the brain. Let's talk about neural inflammation because I mean that's a it's quite an important side of, of any sort of damage causes inflammation. So in terms of this immunity and reparation and the impact of testosterone on a broader scale apart from just a concussion how might that work? So if we have injuries to the brain and when we look at the brain it's brain tissue the neurons and that can be anywhere along the spine and into the brain right. if there's something that upsets the brain the inflammation that the brain suffers from is something that has to be directly treated and for a very long time for up to now i think you know what neuroinflammation was not something that we really knew about so neuroinflammation over a long period of time leads to things like autoimmune disease, yes. chronic pain. And by addressing these issues and finding which part of the brain is really battling or is inflamed mm. and treating it with 
um, the right kind of lifestyle, supplementation, anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, and giving the brain the, the substances that it needs, you know, it, you can restore brain function, decrease inflammation, and restore overall well-being. Okay. Now, things like brain fog, I mean, th that affects so many people because they've, they've not necessarily living the healthiest lifestyle, um, fatigue over time, extra stress, and things like that. What sort of impact would, would testosterone have on that kind of condition? So I would go back, I would like to go back a year. Okay. And you know, at last year, we launched the T-Clinic for Women. After a study that was published that said that the best treatment for um, postmenopausal and menopausal women for low libido mm. is testosterone. And we incorporated that into our practice. And you know what, there again, we saw that the biggest effect wasn't on libido, but it was on the functioning of the brain, and specifically brain fog, memory, energy levels. Um, and for me, that was a breakthrough. Mm. You know, but that I can suddenly treat menopausal, perimenopausal, and postmenopausal women um, and make them feel better. Yes. That that symptom of I can't put my my finger on what I was just thinking mm. or uh, I can't remember a name that for me was was powerful and testosterone and low doses thereof sustainable doses of testosterone is what gives us this phenomenal effect okay. um, and for me it's life-changing and it's life-changing for my patients absolutely so let's just talk about the mechanics here because I think it's quite an interesting one for people to understand how is testosterone administered when it's for this purpose so there's a couple of ways of administering testosterone. Firstly, you have your injectables. And I'm going to leave it there, but we'll circle back okay. to it. Then you have your transdermal um, preparations, which would either be in the form of a patch or a cream. There are some oral preparations, but I stay clear from them. Okay. The moment that we swallow something, you know, it, it's really dependent on the health of our gut as to how much of it's going to be a right. bioavailable. Yes. So I trend not to go there. For the transdermal preparations, it's exactly the same thing. What did I do just before I put my patch or my cream on? Am I hot, am I cold, am I sweaty, am I not sweaty? Am I going to engage in physical activity where I'm not going to absorb the product? Where do I put it on? Is the skin soft? Is it pliable? Is it absorbing the product? So there's also a little bit of this disinformation okay. around that. Okay. For me, the best way is the injectables. For men and for women, I prefer to use short-acting um, uh, preparations just because it makes it easier to control the dose. Okay. So the preparations that's on the market today have all been um, prepared specifically for men. Mm. And that gives us a little bit of problem for women because you have to be able to titrate the dose to suit women, and it's about 10 to 15 times less okay, so it's than that difference. of men. Okay. So that gives us a little bit of a challenge, but the moment that you understand the mathematics that goes with mm. that, you know what, it's quite easy. Okay, and how frequently or how long would the treatment be um, of testosterone? How many times a month or a year would you go for treatment? So in men, um, the way in which I treat them, it's once a week. Okay. In women, it can be anything from once a week to once every second week to even once every third week, depending on their age. And you know what, for me, and I've said this often, you, you work according to your blood results. Okay, okay. Now, in conjunction with this sort of treatment, what sort of lifestyle changes or, or amendments would people be looking at? Most of the patients that battle with low testosterone have one common symptom, no motivation. Okay. So they cannot get themselves to change their lifestyle. Right. And for me, this is quite powerful about testosterone, is that it gives you the drive, the energy, 
the motivation. It helps you with that. And it helps you to feel good enough mm. to start uh, making small changes in your life, to want to get up in the morning out of bed and to do something. Right. And that, you know, it is a great help. And I find that most patients, when they start on this, do change their lifestyle because mm. suddenly they, they feel better. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like... There's it's a like shift not of some being kind. able to put your finger mm. onto it. And you've been from doctor to doctor to doctor and specialist to specialist. And all of them say, you know, nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And no one can pinpoint this. And you start feeling as if you are mad. Yes. And that no one believes you. Uh, and that it's all in your head. It's not. Um, and the moment that you, that you start feeling this change, it's like, Ding, <laughs> the light bulb goes on yeah. and you know what, you feel better and you change your life. It's phenomenal. Absolutely. So Mark, if people want to find out a bit more about this kind of therapy, where can they get in touch with you? The easiest is to get hold of us on www.theclinic.com and the phone number in Johannesburg is 010-824-1393. We have branches available in Umschlange. Uh, Pretoria, we're opening a new branch in Limpopo, in, oh, in Mokupani. Right. And we will be opening a branch in Bloemfontein very shortly. Oh, fantastic. So lots of exciting things on yeah, the horizon. Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you so much for sharing some insight into this because I think it's a very interesting topic which maybe could just be what some people are looking for out there in a sense of almost desperation and really, as you say, just finding that solution to their issues. You know what? It's as easy as going to your GP and just asking, test my levels. Mm, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Michael.